Today is a Thursday, December 10th. We are talking right now with professional handicapper Teddy Covers, and we're going to do a video right now entitled NBA Money Burners. We're going to take a look at some teams that have been bad bets ATS and think about uh, which ones might be bad bets going forward against the spread. Teddy Covers, uh, you know, the first two that come to mind are uh, the Clippers and the Rockets. They have been bad bets, but they've been playing better recently, right? The Rockets have been covering. The Clippers have been about 500 over their past uh, six or seven games. Then I'm also thinking about the Cavs. Not a surprise that they are... Uh, you know, overvalued with, with LeBron James. That might continue. They're 7 and 14 ATS right now, lost five in a row. And then, uh, sort of, to uh, l lower uh, tier teams uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of hype that have been bad bets, the Bulls at 6 and 13 and the Pelicans at 7 and 14. Question, though, of course, is what can we expect from any of these teams going forward? What do you think, Teddy Covers? And that's a great question because the concept is not to just look back and say, all right, yes. all these teams have cost you money. That's the easy concept as hell. Is, yes. Which of these teams <laughs> – yeah, exactly. That's a, uh, the concept is which of these teams is going to continue losing money. And, and the two that you mentioned right off the top, the Clips didn't even make the list because of last night's win and cover in Milwaukee. They are now at 40% against the spread for the season. And the teams uh, that I wrote about today are all under 40% ATS. So the Clips certainly have shown – signs of coming around. I don't think they're going to be a good spread team, but I don't know if they're going to be money burners right. moving forward. And same thing with the Rockets. I mean, the Rockets were so bad and underachieved so much over the first month of the campaign. The markets really crashed on Houston. At the same time, they made a personnel decision. Uh, the Bickerstaff, the new head coach, uh, installed Patrick Beverly as the starting point guard and sent Ty Lawson back where he belongs on the bench uh, and coming off the bench. And they did the, 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 difference has been pretty, pretty clear. Uh, Houston's played much better defensive basketball in recent games, and they've covered the number in four of their last five. So two teams that are trending upwards uh, after some pretty dismal starts are the uh, Rockets and the Clippers. But uh, you talked about another team, Oklahoma City, who's been a disaster mm -hmm. uh, point spread-wise this season. And yeah, Kevin Durant has been banged up, but you look at this Thunder team, they're ranked number two in the NBA in offensive efficiency behind only Golden State. They're top ten in defensive efficiency. They're the NBA's leaders in rebounding margin. The stats show OKC is very, very elite. And certainly the markets have given them that perception so far this season. The problem, of course, that they haven't been able to play at an elite level on a consistent basis. Certainly not winning games by big margins. And OKC's value problem is something that I wouldn't be surprised to continue moving forward. Uh, hmm. All right. Okay, so you expect under, OKC it, it, to uh, to be uh, possibly um, a bad bet going forward. And then the big question, the Cavs, they've lost five in a row as of right now. ATS, they're 7-14 and 14 against the spread overall. Winning games, but not covering. Do you expect that to continue, Teddy Covers? Very much so. Uh, I mean, Cleveland, again, this team has nothing to prove in the regular season. All they want to do is get the rotations together, and get healthy by the time April rolls around. That's their only goal. And mm -hmm. when you look at the East, there's no one in the East that can challenge a, a healthy Cleveland team. It's not like they uh, need home court edge to win the Eastern Conference or anything like that. They don't need any of that stuff. And it's been very clear uh, over the course of the first uh, six weeks of the campaign. You know, the Cavs are, I'm not going to say going through the motions, but as a team that everyone considers to be the best team in the Eastern Conference, you know, from a power rating perspective right now, they're, you know, right in the middle of the pack when it comes to the quote-unquote elite Eastern teams for me right now. And I don't see Cleveland as a type of squad that's going to put their foot down at this stage. Say, all right, we're going to get better right now. That's going to be a process. And it may not happen until after Kyrie Irving comes back, after Eamon Shumpert comes back, and after those two get acclimated into the rotation. Because, again, the first game back, the second game back, it might take a little while uh, for a team like Cleveland with so many stars getting everybody the appropriate minutes and getting guys in the Ball, uh, with a ball in their hands in the positions that they like to score. All right, and then let's talk about the Bulls and the Pels. Both of them uh, have bad records, ATS on the year, and both of them just feel like kind of teams that are going to disappoint you more than they're going to uh, surprise you. Yeah, once in a while they'll have, you know, a game where they kind of step up, play better than expected, and get a cover. But for every one of those games, they're having like one and a half or two games that are in the opposite direction, playing worse than expected and, uh, and getting an ATS loss, and you're kind of like angry at yourself if you bet on them. What do you expect going forward from the Bulls and the Pelicans? Uh, you know, I mean, Chicago, again, yesterday, is an ideal spot, absolute step-up spot for the Bulls. What happens? They come up short. Um, you know, they are not Not that short, though. Only a little bit, you know. Sure, but the, the, the bottom line is that if that point spread is five, they get a push. If it's five yeah. and a half, they get a win. 
the fact that the point spread is three it tells us that reading. the markets right, right. and then and come on let's be i mean I, you know i had a, a little bit of bulls in my pocket last night but they weren't the right side in that game i mean you could say that uh, maybe they had a chance in the final minute but you know this is a team with lots of star power and that's the commonality we're talking about with all of these poor point spread teams every one of them you know last week when we talked about the good point spread teams they weren't teams loaded with superstars when we look at the list of all the bad teams, the Bulls of Derrick Rose and Pau Gasol and the Thunder of Durant and Westbrook and, uh, you know, the, uh, I mean, on and on down the line, you have uh, the Pelicans with Anthony Davis, the Cavs with LeBron James and Kevin Love. Uh, you know, you, you have all these teams with the name players and the names result in a little bit of a higher price tag. That's been problematic. Certainly the Pelicans has been problematic. They've been a disaster so far this season. There's hope for New Orleans. You know, they're just starting to get healthy in the backcourt. Holiday and Tyreek Evans have both been hurt. And once that duo gets acclimated to what Alvin Gentry wants them to do, there might be hope for New Orleans. For Chicago, I'm not convinced there's a lot of hope right now. I think they're going to continue to be money burners. All right. Teddy Covers expecting um, the Bulls to continue to be generally a uh, bad ATS bet until further notice. Is there any other team that you want to uh, bring to our attention as far as the topic of NBA money burners going forward is concerned? Well, we've talked about a lot of teams that were supposed to be good coming into the season, and all of them have underachieved, uh, at least against the point spread they have. The one team that we haven't talked about was it's, it's, it's kind of bizarre when you look at them at the bottom of the ATS standings. That's the L.A. Lakers. Mm -hmm. And everybody knew the Lakers were going to be bad this year. The fans knew it. The bookmakers knew it. The Lakers were priced as a bottom feeder coming into the campaign. And the Lakers were really bad last year. And the Lakers have been bad. And yet they still haven't been covering numbers. You know, So okay. it's not like this team has played worse than expectations. They just, they're just a really, really bad basketball team. And one thing that I don't like to do is try to find spots to – get myself to the window to bet on bad teams. Lakers, for me right now, continue to be a one-way team. If I'm not betting against them, I'm probably not going to be involved. Yeah, you know, the Lakers are interesting, though, because uh, we, it depends on how much the market will adjust. Like that game against Toronto, right? I was I was looking at that game. I was like, man, this is a good spot for Toronto. I want to bet them. But then, you know, I saw 12 and a half, and I said, that just feels like too many points. And I laid off, and it turned out that that was the right decision because, uh, you know, the Lakers did get beat soundly, but... 12 and a half was too many. They wound up covering. So maybe the market is, is, is coming around and that they're going to be appropriately priced going forward. You know, we, we've seen some signs of that. And the Lakers have been a much better point spread team the last two weeks than they were prior to that. That being said, when you're a bad team and you're right. only winning games occasionally, you know, what do they have, three straight up wins this year? It's really hard to make money with teams like that. You know, you, you might find some spots where you say, all right, this is a good spot for L.A. You might find a few games where you're like, hey, you know, this team can't be laying 12 and a half. It's just too high. But to recommend the Lakers as a bet on team following this dismal effort, you know, this dismal start to the season, I just can't do it uh, because I expect L.A. to continue losing. And as the losing continues, you know, the six-point losses become 10-point losses, become 14-point losses. The level of effort oftentimes declined as the season Right, progresses. so ATS turnarounds are uh, much more likely to come faster if you're expecting a team to uh, improve its play than if you're uh, hoping for the market to uh, make an adjustment. Interesting uh, thoughts as always. Teddy Covers, thanks so much.